I'm gonna join us from Shopify. Toby, come on out. Hey, hey. Let your winners ride. Rain Man David Sack. And I said, we open source it to the fans and they've just gone crazy with it. Love you, West Ice. Queen of Kinwa. Okay, everybody. So, um, this is a, a real um, honor. So, t this is an incredible founder success story. Um, just your average everyday CEO founder of an $82 billion public company sitting here. <laughs> um, so Toby and I met a few years ago. His, the origin story of Shopify is pretty legendary, which is that he um, was in Whistler snowboarding. Mm -hmm. um, he met his future wife there, Canadian. They moved to Germany. Toby started a, uh, a store to sell the snowboards. Then moved to Ottawa, my hometown. A couple people here from Ottawa. As one does. Um, I think you're one of the first developers of Ruby, actually, that mm -hmm. really commercialized. And, and Toby built a website to sell snowboards, but then abstracted that, started to sell the software that sold the snowboards. And fast forward, that is what Shopify has become. And it's been quite an incredible success story. A, because you were able to raise a lot of money building a business in Ottawa. B, because then you took it public on the NASDAQ. C, you got a lot of COVID tailwinds. D, you had to deal with COVID headwinds. Um, but then along the way, you've really been very transparent and honest about the culture of building companies and some of the mistakes you've made, you've put out there. We're going to talk about those, those in a second. Great. But I want to start with more macro because we just had Ray um, on stage. You run a big e-commerce business. You see consumer spending. We know that the consumer is the largest part of GDP, so we must have a sense of whether the consumer is turning over. We're seeing all the headlines. Is there a recession? Is there not? Hard landing, soft landing. Um, where is the economy from your vantage point? Yeah, so, I mean, if you have an amazing perspective, but I don't think it's a, it's a, it's a credible witness to the entire economy. It's um, about half a trillion dollar has been transacted through Shopify in its lifetime. And, um, it is really, really fun to do the analysis on, on it, but like fundamentally, the products sold on Shopify are not um, are the products people want, not the products people need. And, and I think this is specifically shifts the um, um, landscape a little bit. Um, what the, um, and also the other fun thing is it's really good for falsifying bad media narratives because, as, you know, as always, it's like everyone puts up a chart and says this is the answer and then we get to dig in one level deeper and actually see what are the constituent parts underneath the chart and everything, change, uh, the story changes. So um, like, we definitely see people react. Like, we know a recession is going on or at least um, it, it changes behavior, but the particular way in which it changes behavior is, is probably not a fully explored story. Uh, um, um, outside of uh, Python notebooks and, and companies like Shopify. Um, because fundamentally what people do is um, um, they, <laughs> in most categories, they shift one quality level downwards. Um, so if you ended up like um, shopping at like medium spend level, you might look for fast fashion afterwards. In some cases, in our case, this means people um, might drop out of the Shopify ecosystem and go to, um, you know, purchase maybe clothing at Walmart or something. Um, in some cases, at the top of the market, um, like we don't have every LVMH brand on Shopify, so like people might uh, have purchases there and actually arrive at like a challenger brand and um, that is on a platform. So honestly, the numbers actually are unchanging. The dynamics that make up the numbers are changing from our perspective. Have That's you, fascinating. Have you, when you think about building the business? I think Stripe's mission is something like to maximize the GDP of the internet. Mm. Um, is that roughly your mission as well? And I think um, uh, sec second order, yes. But like, um, honestly, Shopify prays at the altar of entrepreneurship, uh, of, of people reaching for independence. And um, it's, it's really ca like causing entrepreneurship to be a more casual uh, thing rather than this uh, huge like, all, like decision. Like the, the be being able to be an entrepreneur in your lunch break so that you can maybe escape like a career which you chose for the wrong reasons and, and you're the kind of people like you discover like myself, you're the kind of person who really can't work for other people and um, um, 
Retail and building shops and businesses has been around for a long time, thousands of years. It's something, it is one of the most accessible mechanisms of uh, independence. And um, as the internet is just a huge part of the economy now, like the ease by which you could start a stand in the bazaar needs to somehow be translated to um, um, the, the, the digital world. And I, I mean, we, we talk, you guys talk on a, pod, um, a lot about policy and um, um, incentive systems, and also important. I do think the thing that's missing in sometimes in these conversations is friction. Like, honestly, friction shapes the world so much more than, like, what, what laws or what um, policies is anyone going to pass to cause more entrepreneurship? But if you make it harder, you're going to get less of it. And frankly, most people in the world work for small businesses. It's like, depending on where you look, 60 to 80 percent. So that seems like an incredibly aligning mission. Yes. We're going to maximize entrepreneurship, give people independence, a path to escape the drudgery of whatever they may be doing, be, their, be in control of their own lives. That's very empowering. But somewhere along the way, you had to write this memo, Incredi I mean, incredible memo. We are a team and not a family, because somewhere along the way, your team got distracted from that mission. Can you talk about what happened in that moment and yeah. why you had to do it and what, what it's like afterwards? You're very kind of about that. I, I, um, it's a, it's a, it was an internal um, memo that I wrote that uh, leaked and, and, and apparently uh, struck a chord with a lot of people. Um, I think it was actually leaked in a con in, in, in package as a cancellation attempt on me, which I think backfired, which is really uh, <laughs> gratifying. Uh, and um, <laughs> I... We've got a number of cancel CEOs speaking this yeah, yeah, yeah. the next two days. Um, Brian Armstrong, <laughs> Elon. <laughs> yes. Um, well, and I mean, I think this is the good, the good news is like um, on the other side, you come out stronger. I think, but, um, you know, this was a very confused time, the 2020, 2021 energy period. And um, I, I mean, everyone wanted to do something. And some, if, if everyone wants to do something, people will do something. And that something might be really, really, really um, un, um, cool. Um, thing, which is with lots of divisiveness, um, and as we all saw, clad in terms that ought to be agreeable, like it's, it sounded pretty good, and frankly, I, I, mean, I mean, this is maybe not even the topic you're bargaining for, but like, it's not even, I, I found myself in this weird situation where I'm, um, you know, generally agreeing with people's diagnoses of all the things that are wrong around me, and um, definitely disagreeing with literally every proposed uh, uh, way <laughs> to go about it and solving it. Um, and so, you know, like there, there was a lot, a lot of distraction and um, uh, Shopify has always seen itself as a, uh, it's, it's not, that's also a canceled term, common carrier, right? Like we had like uh, Elizabeth Warren selling, uh, uh, Marx selling, saying billionaires tears on them and Trump on the other side selling, you know, whatever Trump was selling. And I like that. That's a big tent company. That's exactly what you want, right? Because that's sort of, it's, it's a weird idea to segment the internet into these various components. And so then there was another thing that happened, another thing, and we had all these Slack channels go way past self-healing and like it ended up becoming this incredible uh, complexity. At which point I'm like, I wanted to remind everyone just like, hey, <laughs> we, we're, we're trying to cause a particular thing for people to, you know, reach for independence. It's really not for us to pre-select here. Like, like let, let people, as long as they do something legal, we support them. And in fact, we are just pushing them from behind via tool. Like, your screwdriver is not going to tell you that you can't screw in something into a wall because you're a Republican <laughs> voter. So, like, it's just like... Simplify this whole goddamn thing and just say like, hey, we are showing up to make this, to build cool shit. We, we are filling our parts with giving us shit, but like... Is part of that principle, you, you mentioned LVMH before. I actually, if I look and compare your business to LVMH, which I've done, I actually think it's quite similar. Because if you talk to Bernard Arnault and you see the infrastructure of what they've built and the abstractions, you've done that. It's just you're 40 years separated and you're technological and they're much more procedural, but they do the same things which they plug in these great businesses, they, they empower them to run, et cetera. Have you ever been tempted to more vertically integrate and like you see categories and you think to yourself, wow, maybe we could do more, we could enable this or we could lower costs even further or we could, you know, if we own this kind of a business, we could build logistics for everybody. I mean, you kind of tried to do it a little bit. Explain that journey. The, uh, the, the decision is always like, can we make it easier for other people to look amazing? 
That's like, we, it's not our job to be the front. We are, I mean, this is the quip of my investors, um, who are almost all Americans. Um, um, uh, it was always like, <laughs> only Canadians can build a, this company because you're trying to be nowhere. <laughs> you're doing the exactly the opposite. You make other people <laughs> look good. And so um, that's pretty deeply ingrained. That's called the anti um, jk <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, um, yeah, so now, we, I mean, I, I don't want to do uh, Shopify basics or something like this. That would be totally a side quest for us, and I'm big on main quest, so I, I, I want to keep things. You, um, you bought Deliver, but uh, a week ago, when Flexport fired their CEO, you sold Deliver to Flexport, and then the day, same day, which is fucking boss, you signed a deal with Amazon. Uh, <laughs> that's not what I intend my book. But although, like, that was, <laughs> although that's how it was portrayed, was like a very... Yeah, yeah. Can you describe there, there, there what happened? There was a conspiracy theory tweet that went viral yeah. on this, that it was all a plan of Bezos, that he fired, put the guy in to run Flexport to get this deal done, <laughs> and then jettison out, and then totally cripple I Flexport. I give him my highest recommendation. <laughs> <Yeah. Just Right. laughs> He's a wonderful man. You should have him be your CEO. Amazing. But, um, yeah. yeah, like, I mean, I think, I think people... Um, Conspiracy theory talk is really, really fun, but I think people <laughs> massively underestimate how hard they are to execute. <laughs> like this, this sounds very, very um, um, educatory. Um, the, the um, no, like the again. It, Here's what my friends who build a lot of free companies on Shopify say. They say it's like most fun, like they, they, they treat it as a video game. Like many are like do it over and over and over again. And I, I want them to keep building these businesses and they turn, but they flip them or they stop at a certain point. Why? It's always the same. At some point they are getting to the point where like, okay, the next two years of my life, I'm going to build warehouses and deal with operational excellence. And I'm, 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 I'm a, I make online stores, I make products, I make, this is what I want to do. So I'm like, okay, cool, like Shopify is big, I'm going to pull the complexity of figuring out logistics into Shopify because then I can amortize it over the total um, um, uh, millions of stores that exist. Um, that was the plan. Um, we bootstrapped it, but like we can't run it in the end. So this is like it went to Flexport because that's their main quest. And I think that's all totally okay. Um, I'm super pro founders running their companies. I think that's, so th this is why I'm celebrating, uh, celebrating that Ryan is coming back and also Ryan is totally fucking awesome. So, um, um, why did you do the deal with Amazon? Uh, deal with Amazon is mostly about um, buy with Prime. Um, well, look, so, so this is, you know, a lot was made out of a Shopify challenging Amazon um, story. And, you know, like, it's a good story. But, like, maybe this is a bit about me. I'm, I'm a product, I'm not a product of business school, right? Like, I'm, I'm an engineer, I apprentice. I'm, I'm a blue-collar engineer. I apprenticed as a programmer in Germany. Um, I had a Meister. I could have gone for journeymanship to town to town, kind of doing this European thing. Um, then they decided against it. Um, I grew up with open source. It's, it's positive sum. Like, it's not, it's not fighting for percentage points. We're like, we can build so much more if we work together. And um, um, specifically around by with Prime, by with, like, Prime is a incredible brand. It's probably a better brand than Amazon in, in some cases. Yeah. Um, there is a plausible future in which um, cons like the purchasers, or buyers, as we call them in our parlance, like, just want to buy everything through Prime for, because that's the trusted brand. I think it would be very bad for my company and I think a lot of my customers if they would have to fire Shopify just because their, their customers ask them to provide Amazon by the Prime services. And I just like... So, so it's much better to work with them. Instead. In that way, you look at Amazon Prime as like Visa or something. It's just a technology. It's a club of. It's a group of users. Why, why keep them? Shopify away from supports there? 86 right. different payment gateways. I wrote 42 of integrations myself. So I'm curious how you do look at Amazon as a competitor and your advice to these this entrepreneurial class mm -hmm. of how they, knowing what you know, should engage with Amazon. There has been a lot of hand wringing, uh, and we see it with the FTC and Lena Khan's uh, obsession with, I think, Amazon and third party fulfillment and Amazon house brands. You referenced Amazon Basics. You just said Basics, but obviously that's what you're referring to. <laughs> what is your analysis of is it in the best interest of a shop? 
to put their inventory on Amazon knowing that Amazon, you know, is um, kind of like the Borg. They, they will study your product, they will grind you down, they will lower the price, and then the corollary to that in part two, what, is, what are you seeing in consumer thinking? Because as we watched every single product get copied so quickly, fast between, whether it's fast fashion or fast gadgets, everything gets copied. But what I find myself and a lot of other people doing now is retreating to brands and you mentioned trust. And so is there now the pendulum swinging to, you know, I'm not trying to find the lowest price and the cheapest product. I actually want a brand that I can trust. You know, some people are wearing a certain brand of shoes here that they really like. Um, so maybe you could talk about those See two things. name, Jason. Laura Piana. Thank you. And I, I have a pair now, and they are buttery. They are, it's the, I literally put them on, and I was like, I don't know if I deserve these. I had to get myself back up for wearing $1,200 slippers. You could, but you, apparently you, you these guys mix, don't care. They're you can like, mix it up with a pair of Adams, so I highly recommend Yeah, no, I know. You're the richest guy on the stage, and you're wearing $16 <laughs> shoes, and these guys are wearing $1,200 shoes. I think that's why you're the richest guy on the stage. But anyway, let's talk about... Um, let's talk about Amazon. So, so and, Amazon first. Look, Amazon is like... A, like everyone should study the company. They are like, like absolutely incredible. I, again, do not think about... Like, I, I do not like thinking about who gets which percentage. I think it really messes with people's like actual analysis of what they ought to be doing, especially entrepreneurs if, uh, if building in space. Amazon is a rival, and rivals are there to inspire you to be better. If you treat your, any one of your competitors in a different way, I think you're doing you're, you're causing a category mistake. Um, I, I, maybe in the more physical world, absolutely, there's like yeah, where it's really f a clear finite pie. Maybe you need to bring a different uh, mindset, but like if you're anywhere close to software, it's positive sum and everything's growing. So I think that's, um, um, I would say, about Amazon. You said, you but said now the that, brand uh, part, though. You said that you have how many payment providers? It's 80, 86. 86. Okay, so break down Stripe and Adyen for a second. <laughs> Why? Well, brain tree. Stripe, Adyen, Brain tree. <laughs> yes. Um, why well, do 86 payment providers okay. even exist? Yeah, that's, uh, that is an excellent question. Um, and has to do with... Um, um, the, it goes back to your friction point. Yeah, yeah, the Byz Byzantine um, world of interchange. And, yeah. um, so and that's regulatory all just regulatory entrenchment. capture? I mean, look, uh, some of these payment gateways, I, I mean, I really hope my team disabled them. I, when I implemented them in 2004, um, here's what you had to do, is you had to take the credit card, put it into an Excel spreadsheet, and upload it to an FTP site. Yeah. Unbelievable. So um, that's exactly as secure as you, uh, and error prone as you can imagine. So, but that was a state of the art um, uh, at a certain point of time, as such as it is. I, I have very low, maybe this is where my extraordinarily low opinion about the orthodoxy and the status quo comes from. Um, but it's, uh, you know, Stripe and uh, Alien and um, maybe to a sometimes brain, brain tree are uh, like much more competent implementations of, the, of this fundamental idea. And they're massively complex. Like, again, they're interchangeable because at the end of the day, you can do a lot of what you need to do with free API codes. It's basically authorized capture and um, purchase directly. Um, and uh, so they look interchangeable, but like what's happening behind, I mean, they're great businesses. They're Any great specifically, businesses. yes. Okay, so you there's you have to be more prime, leading to get guys them to commit to anything. Pay, yeah. <laughs> you know, all these things eventually are the things that these guys interact with, right? Yeah. They're not going to know what's behind the yeah. scenes. They know that it's shop pay is one click. It's elegant. It's amazing. I used it this weekend. Buy with Prime, same kind of concept. So, what is it that you guys, you as a business, your shareholders will say, Toby, get as much margin as possible. And obviously, you're going to look at that and say, well, hold on, if I'm running a trillion dollars over my network, 50 basis points all of a sudden adds up to a lot of net income for me. Mm -hmm. So you're going to go and do it. That's like a no-brainer. What happens to those companies? What do they do where you would actually go back to your shareholders and say, ah, no, I'm going to pay more to these guys tomorrow than I do today because it's critical and I can't do it? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more than me, so I... Like, uh, honestly, we have VC companies go from one uh, um, uh, payment gate to another and everything about the business changes and they kind of don't know why. It's, there's, the card acceptance rate are be really, really different between them. There's a huge amount of machine learning goes into like what, at which point you want to accept which card. 
performance is a huge one. Like this is sort of a really invisible one because like latency to compute or in the world of computation, uh, um, computing, it's sort of like pollution in the real world. It's like a negative externality sort of bestowed upon the next layer and um, other people. But like um, in e-commerce, you can just really see it, right? Like it's your, your sales are going, going, down, going down. And it's usually the credit card gateways that have the largest issue um, with performance and these kind of things that have to use uh, basis points games to, to, to attract customers. So we've actually seen uh, sales going down in the, this way. Bo both Stripe and Adyen are excellent. Um, that's also, I mean, if, if, you, if you're asking about what makes these businesses and what, uh, do they have, are, are they fungible? I mean, they're building trust relationships to the brand question, really, with the CFO office, right? Like, it's uh, in, in, in business software, just like consumer um, software, you know, attention matters or engagement, as it's called usually. Um, and um, you want to, like, if you have a trust relationship with a CFO of a company, you are going to be hired for more and more services, and there's a lot of services related to the flow of funds. Um, I think um, there's also lots of opportunities, just bringing it back because you're trying to make me commit about making a value start statement that's kind of a zero sum statement about um, you know, two or three companies here. Um, you know, the larger opportunity in, in this space is like there's a lot of fantastic new rails that are being built in, in the crypto world. We're not so cool on this right now, but soon we are going to be cool again because this is the way humanity works. And then we get to build and there's some really, really good technology underneath it all, which is quite ready. There's also, um, I mean, I don't know when the last time was that uh, a credit card network was created, but certainly a long time ago, and there's a good deal of business brainsmanship that's, gonna go, uh, that's, that's going on from that side, and I think there's some opportunities tell to us, work together. Tell us about what you're doing in AI. You launched a co-pilot. Um, it's, it's literally like anybody could become their own business person. It's really incredible. Do you want to talk about that for a little bit? Every time, this is my favorite thing about Shopify, other than the, the fact that we sort of, we as a business sit on the same side of the table as like the merchants, the partners. The best thing we can do for Shopify to, um, for our business model is actually make our customers more successful, which is just, like, it's an incredible simplifier, and it's incredible how many businesses are actually really doing sort of a fakery cosplay on top of a principal agent problem, really. Um, so we, we, we have, it, it's much more simp simple for us. Um, the other thing, the thing that I'm so excited about, because I didn't, I, I only had that as a hope when I started, but then um, uh, it's proven out, is that uh, this thing I said about the um, friction in the process, Every single time we shipped something that reduced the friction by a meaningful amount, we actually had more successful business being built. So we, we really, really proved that out in, in the numbers. A great example is the payment gateway. Again, initially you had to make a choice. When I had to get my payment gateway for my snowboard store, I had to have a two-hour interview with someone in American Fork, Utah, and then... Um, mail my passport to them, right? Like, like but not a copy. <laughs> and so um, that's kind of the friction that existed for just form formation. And like now it's like instant underwriting and everyone, everyone just like, the first time someone buys something, we tell you, hey, where is the money supposed to go, right? So um, the amazing thing about AI is um, there's some problems we can't address with friction removal, which is actually like sort of, um, experience in life kind of thing. I, my, my, my grandmother has had a um, sort of printing press uh, a place, a copy shop with like big letter presses and these kind of things. Um, I was like, as a kid, like doing the uh, lead kerning, like typesetting, the actual old stuff uh, with, with her and it was hugely impressive. But she started this business. So I had like, a, in my firm there, the concept of starting your business is a plausible solution to problems you might encounter in your life. And that's probably true for most of the people we talk about in the entrepreneurial realm, but like they, they, are, they, they have this experience. And um, that's just like, I mean, we're, this is what's so good that, um, you know, your podcast and, and, and just society talks more about this being a possibility, but like still people can't see themselves in it. If they do, often they do it in a, in a sort of reach via desperation. You know, plan B for so many people on planet Earth is better than plan A, 
It's, it's, the one, it's because they have learned to downgrade. They, they've, they've made the switch at some point. That's but fantastic. Um, many, many well, I mean, people they, reach. Lowering risk, I think, maybe is exactly. yeah, people's default setting. And it worked for surviving on the planet, but maybe it doesn't work for Thriving. the modern era. Yeah. And taking risk is more bold. But um, So what does the co-pilot do? It's a, it's, <laughs> well, uh, hopefully it helps you with courage. <laughs> it maintains your courage, because you courageously reach for, like, I'm going to try this thing in my lunch break. But here's someone. You can, like we, we survey people, that, like the successful stores tend to, like I think with 85% answer that um, you had someone who would return a text in 24 hours with a question about starting a business. Um, it's massive predictor of success. So I think what chatbots are already good at is like being patient and competent and answering your questions. There's a lot of questions they can't answer because there's, um, you know, just not the training set isn't ideal for niche pursuits such as uh, e-commerce entrepreneurship, but that's something we can fix through, you know, the wonders of fine tuning and these kind of things. And so, what does it do? We want it to be like just like someone who sits next to you, basically. It's like a chat. You like can ask questions about business, but like if you say, "Hey, I need my store to like look more like summer rather than um, fall or whatever," now um, it will be able to help you with that and will ask you questions and it. Um, if you ask it to, like, what should I do in terms of product discovery or um, how can I increase sales, I saw in the demo, it would say, hey, you should put these things on the front page and you may want to do this type of sale. Yes. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. It's honestly, it's, I mean, <laughs> sometimes Tony, that, it's unbelievably that's, that's done. That's trained on all Shopify data, not yes. just that user, right? So th there's a clear aggregation effect. That's why we'll affect you it. Did, right? um, yes. You did, I, I'm always interested in the really outlier founders because they they do business differently. They learn different tasks you, and different ways of managing people. And we didn't get into it with Ray, but man, Bridgewater has a whole operating system mm -hmm. of how they record people. It's very impressive, it's very intense. Um, you have a very interesting one where you released and it went viral a counter so when you make a meeting, it tells you how much that meeting cost. And then you demanded everybody justify the costs of the meetings. I don't know if you're making them account for it on their budgets or not yet, uh, but this resonated and hit a chord. Uh, looking at the success of the company, what are the two or three operating principles, like the, I would say, a no meeting culture or a you know, meeting if it's really essential yeah. culture, but what are the other two or three things that now when you look forward running this company and getting it to the next level, which is gonna be harder and harder, this is how we operate at Toby's Shopify. Yeah, I, I, look, I, I, I take the founder role very seriously. I, again, it's, it's not, this is not about me, but it's like I think companies that have, like there is a founder slot which might be filled or not in every company because every company got founded. If the founder slot is filled, you have incredible ability to change your, uh, the company, partly because the way, I always loved social capital as a, as a concept, and I, I, I think a lot about it. It's, it's, to me, this is like a bank account, right? Like it's, 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 it's a balance that's deposited, and the way any kind of value is deposited into it comes from storytelling. And the founding story is ever present in a company, therefore there is daily um, uh, settlements into the account on, uh, accruing to a founder. And if a founder is not there anymore, it's sort of like someone deleted a private key and you can't spend it anymore. So what am I spending it on? I um, want Shopify to be a company that um, is, well, first of all, it's really, really, really great for crafters. I, I again, I apprenticed, I, it's blue collar and approach to engineering. This should be a crafter's paradise, and we just really, really, really make sure we have great teams and uh, great environments for crafters to like, do their craft. And that's usually very small teams and so on. There's a huge amount of anti-status um, quo bias. Like, it is just like, man, like the world is not that great. All companies are terrible. Um, the only thing any of us gets to hope for is that at the end of our careers, we're gonna look at the companies we built in 2020 and, and beyond or before and say, my company was slightly less terrible than all the other companies. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the best anyone can do. To me, that's actually a super hopeful message because that reduces the complexity of a task. <laughs> you know, that's, that's something I can do, just being slightly less terrible. Suck less. 
But like the key thing is subtraction, and this is where the founders' lots energy comes from. It seems to me that it's only founders who subtract in companies. This is the meeting thing in a nutshell. Everyone adds recurring meetings and gums up the system. I'm super pro great meetings, but like once every couple uh, year and a half or so, we randomly delete all recurring meetings. We're actually gonna do random deletion of Slack channels and all these kind of things, just because they will come back if they're useful. So I think that gives you a sense. Well, I don't think I have time for dissertation, but like again, it's super fun building companies. It's, re it's a really, really fun thing to do, and taking it seriously is, you know, best alpha in it. Ladies and, it and gentlemen, I want to say thank you. Toby, Toby. thank you. Very, very much. Let your winners ride. Rain Man David Sack. And it said we open source it to the fans and they've just gone crazy with it. Love you, West. I squeeze. Wait, <laughs> we need to get merch. Besties are I'm back. Going.